and welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello of the 176th District in Monroe County. Most parents of young children find themselves comparing how quickly their toddler walks and talks to other children of the same age. Each child develops at his or her own pace, so this habit can sometimes lead to unnecessary worry. However, it can also be a valuable thing if a parent is motivated to get help for a child who needs it. In our area, Suzanne Therape Sunshine Therapeutic Services works to enhance the child's development and equip the parents with helpful tools. Joining me to discuss this early intervention program is Suzanne Agdowski, administrator and owner of Karen and Karen Sue Miller, occupational therapist. Welcome to the program. Thank you. If you don't mind, we'll talk about Sunshine afterwards in the second half, but okay. I'd like to talk about early intervention and the importance of early intervention. Karen, do you want to start? You know, if you don't mind, um, and what you do? Um, I work as an occupational therapist mm -hmm. um, in early intervention with children. Uh, I have children who are two months old all the way to three years old, so we cover birth to three years old. Uh, I feel I'm in um, early intervention after being a therapist for, I've been about 35 years. Um, Were you ten, five years old when you yeah, started? Yeah, I was. I was <laughs> okay. um, EI is very important to me because I think that's where, that's the roots of um, educating parents, um, children uh, who have a set diagnosis fare much better if uh, or intervention has been started way early and children who are uh, have a d delay with early intervention you know you sometimes by school time you don't even know that so it's it's quite important I think in a, a child's development and in parents knowledge of um, how you know what to do for their children. Suzanne um, in your experiences like the, the I, I see it in I, I've had uh, I have autism in my family. My 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 uh, uh, sister has an autistic uh, boy, and um, early intervention is so important. Mm -hmm. And if you don't diagnose it early, absolutely, you really it's like the ship sailed and you're still on the pier. It saves um, many budget dollars later for um, therapy that would be needed in school aged, um, but it also. Um, helps families. Our program is so wonderful because we go into the homes and the community settings and we are hands-on with the family and their natural routines. Um, so we can help the families and the children with um, the concerns they have um, and, and that is, is immense in, in that child's development. Mm -hmm. um, and this early therapy that they're getting um, changes once they get a little older and it becomes more educational based and they're you know goodbye to mom and dad and and so we, we really love helping the families with their routines and, and concerns. And, and I guess it's also educating the family at some point also isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Letting them absolutely. know, am I, am I right? Uh, well yeah. that is part of our goal is yeah. we're there most typically we're there one um, hour a week mm -hmm. so our goal is to um, teach the family members, the caregivers, strategies and techniques that they can use throughout the rest of that week, uh, which I know Karen Sue does um, very well feeding and, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, great for the family. And uh, just back to the autism, speaking of the autism, um, when I started, the, that wasn't a prevalent diagnosis, and now it's, it's pretty much the majority of, I'd say probably most of um, our caseload. And uh, usually uh, at this point now, diagnosis of autism begins between 18 months and two years because it's, um, it's a social emotional speech um, uh, diagnostic yeah. thing. And um, we cannot diagnose as, as therapists, but we certainly have learned through experience um, to have great observational skills and um, in different certifications that we get like sensory integration mm -hmm. um, you you just have red flags so we're sort of in there going um, there's some red flags here going with the social emotional part let's uh, so even before the the autistic symptoms come out if we're in there we can look at it and go let's go to a doctor and Let's look now. And get the diagnosis, which is I, fortunate. Um, Pennsylvania is probably one of the leading states 
in you know mandating that insurance covers autism that doctors do diagnose at a young age because for a long time that wasn't happening right and Correct. you miss out on those early those early years and thinking everything will be okay and it actually becomes more of a cost factor like you said earlier Suzanne right. down the road because what happens you missed out on those early opportunities mm -hmm. and the earlier you get in there and do um, you know, speech therapy, sensory integration, um, activities of living with, especially with any diagnosis, but specifically um, autism, the more capable the child can become to their yeah. potential. Yeah. You make that a part of the routine very early. Yeah. 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 And and you know, I've seen it in in, in my nephew, but I've also, you know, uh, did shows on on this issue where um, it, their, their biggest thing is they can't communicate. Or, or they, yeah. Am I correct? Yes. It's, yeah. And the frustration yes. from the communicating and is where... And the behavior issue. And the behavior is. issue begins there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I did a show uh, showing um, a parent at a, at a restaurant mm -hmm. having to yell at the child and people think, well, the, the, the mother is a bad mother, but yeah. no, it, yeah. am I correct? See, that's the great thing about early intervention. We can go in there, we can set up a communication system, whether it's PECS, we're into technology now, we can use iPads, um, mm. and we also can go into community settings. So if a restaurant is a place where a mom is having a hard time, we can go to, to a lunch with you, we can go to the grocery store with you. Um, and, and, and it's teach amazing. you. Yeah. 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 So and we're also in there, our role has changed as interven early interventionist. Um, you're in there as, I don't want to say counselor because I don't know if we're qualified, but we're in there dealing with parents, um, th those kinds of issues, like, mm -hmm. oh, everybody thinks I'm an awful parent, or even just uh, the um, sadness mm -hmm. of this is a different child than what I expected. So sadness and acceptance, their whole grievance, um, you know, the stages that you have to go through. So as an interventionist, no matter if you're in there's uh, speech, in OT, PT, um, you know, a special instructor, you're definitely in there doing family therapy. You're not just in there like a child going to a center or an outpatient hospital, you're working with just the child. There's so much more uh, family issues that you're able to deal with, which is great because, yeah. you know, a child is a family. I, um, it, it also, unfortunately, it affects husband and wife yeah, big absolutely. time. Yes, yes. Uh, for example, the wife will be doing certain things to bring, the, and then here comes dad now and he, everything that she's been trying to do the whole day goes out the window, uh, you know, am, am I correct? Everyone has to be on the same page and... That's... Uh, and it's such a sad statistic that I think uh, couples of special needs children, there's, it's a high divorce rate. And um, I do, you know, there's a lot of uh, early interventionists who are going in who uh, are doing things, you know, with both parents so that the parents have sort of an outsider saying yeah. here's what the consistent um, you know things Sometimes to do. Sometimes you're a mediator as well. Yeah, <laughs> yes. That has happened. Yeah. I had a, a, a family come to me. Um, the son was severely autistic. Um, it was really breaking up their marriage. They, yeah, they were just tough. going and I, and I said to them, I said I think you should look at maybe a, a placement it's obvious because they had other children, and 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 I, and so I helped them to to, to do just that mm -hmm. because it, they just couldn't handle it, you know. I says, and they'll help him. It's not you just don't you just can't do it anymore, mm -hmm. you know. Well, um, they will establish a very nice routine for him that exactly, he will get exactly. very used to. And you can go visit. You can you know, and uh, so sometimes they it's a tough decision. It's yeah. not an easy decision. Yeah. But sometimes it's the best decision because, if, especially if you have other kids in the house. Yeah. Right. Oh. Yeah, and we don't. I don't think that we push either way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's certainly options out there for right. for all families and and what their needs and their, um, you know, what their beliefs are. But uh, it's nice to have the early intervention that you can, 
you know, start to realize what your resources are early on. Yeah. And we're culturally, culturally sensitive mm -hmm. to, to that family. Yeah. And, and usually at this early, you know, we are there for the diagnosis. So at this age, we're not seeing a lot of placement. Yeah. The, the autism rate continues to, mm -hmm. to grow, right? Mm -hmm. now it's, what is it now, one out of every 95 boys? Is that the number or is it? I think it's uh, even uh, boys or girls. I think there's yeah. a higher number I of too. males. I think Male. so, yeah. um, but the but number just continues to grow and you, what's yeah, it's causing crazy. it? And it, it can be related to that, you know, it's being diagnosed more. That's a good where, point. Where, you know, um, maybe it wasn't back in the day. Um, our environment's different, environment. our food is different. They, unfortunately, they haven't been able to get that answer quite nope, yet. we don't know. And you'll, me you'll meet different professionals and families who have very different beliefs about the source of autism. Yeah. They're, oh, I, you know, I, I was just speaking to a man this weekend and he had twin girls and he said they were fine and, and we took them for their one year shots and after sure. that we just, you know, and so, you know, who does really know, you know, the answer until science proves mm -hmm. it, you know? There was another, um, I saw this on YouTube, and I've been involved with the tick, you know, the Lyme disease and all, and uh, there was some cases where the baby had Lyme disease, mm. and the reactions were almost uh, the, the, the same as autistic. Huh. And when they treated the baby for Lyme, the baby, and... And it's, you can see it up on YouTube, and it, it's. Check that and I'm out. wondering if there, that's another, that's you know, where you catch a tick. You know, you're out there in the, in the backyard, and, I, and we're in a big, in our, in our area, it's a high, it's a big population. Yeah, right. The, the, especially this year because of the tick population, because of the, the rain that we've had, um, and it wasn't as cold, so a lot of those ticks survived. And that's so. But there, there's, <laughs> there, but you know, there's another possibility that you sure, know, so, yeah, right, yeah. So you, you really, as a parent today, you've got to be very, very careful. Yeah. You take your and child comes in. If you have a dog, especially if your dog brings in, you got to right. check the dog, right? Because they like to hop on. That's another, that's another <laughs> show. But <laughs> I, I just wanted, you know, since we talked about it, I thought it was important to put out there that that's been another, uh, an, another avenue that you know that could be where some of right. the uh, hmm. growth might be. Right, well, you never know. Mm -hmm. um, autism certainly isn't the only uh, group of children that we work with. We do have children with other diagnoses, hearing loss, Down syndrome, but we do have uh, a number of children that just have a delay. So your child might uh, not have a diagnosis and it's just a little bit behind on the speech mm -hmm. or a, a adaptive um, you know, self-help skills, mm -hmm. uh, their motor development, um, those sorts of things. And so, um, you know, we, we help with those things too. So we're not. Yeah, that's great. Let's start the, the, the second part of the show right. and, and really go into that because, my gosh, doing that at, at, and getting to them at three and four helps them so much in that first grade that they won't be behind the eight ball. Am I correct? Right. Yeah, well, we'll talk about it. Right, sounds great. Let's take a quick break. Legislative report will return in a moment. Did you know that the chamber of the Pennsylvania House of Representatives contains a painting depicting the 24 hours of the day? Located in the center of the ceiling, the mural titled The Hours was created by artist Edwin Austin Abbey. This wonderful masterpiece charts the setting of the sun, moon, and the many stars that grace the heavens. 24 maidens, who each represent an hour of the day, begin each day in light and gladness and ends in solemn drapery carried on still shoulders. Now you know. Hello, I'm State Representative Rosemary Brown. And I'm State Representative Mario Scavello. We'd like to invite you to our Senior Citizens Expo on Monday, July 23rd from 9 to 2 at Pocono Mountain East High School in Swiftwater. Light refreshments will be offered at this free event that includes blood pressure screenings, hearing tests, pre-diabetes testing, and the Mobile Veterans Center will also be available. For more information or directions, contact our offices. The information will be listed on your screen. We hope to see you there. 
Did you know the Avenue of Flags presentation at Indian Town Gap National Cemetery has over 500 casket flags? Among the flags displayed are Commonwealth, territorial, and military flags. The flags are tied to 20-foot poles spaced 40 feet apart on both sides of the main drive of the cemetery. It takes about two hours to set up and take down all of the flags. Volunteers are encouraged to help with this task and must be at least 13 years of age. All of the flags are donated to the Avenue of Flags by families of the deceased. Now you know. Welcome back to the program. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello. My guests are Suzanne Iglaski and Karen Sue Miller from Sunshine Therapeutic Services. We're discussing early intervention strategies for children. And welcome back. And Thank you. this is such an important uh, thing for me because I truly believe the best is, is diagnosing early, helping young children at a young age. Mm -hmm. and, and in the long run, they're, they're going to do much, so much better. And at the same time, it's, it's so much less expensive than having to do it after they progress through that first three years. Absolutely. Right? Right. So let's talk about some of the things that we, we, left, we left at the, uh, the, the second uh, early part of the show on exactly what you do in that first three years. Well, um, let me take a step back, if you don't uh, mind, and sure. say that if a family has a concern about their child, um, that they can uh, call and request an evaluation and somebody will talk to them mm -hmm. and, and they can discuss the different options and, and uh, a family can request an evaluation mm -hmm. um, for their child um, and, it, and somebody will go out to their home um, and do that evaluation and if the child qualifies um, for the service um, and, and we require 25 percent or more delay or a diagno mm -hmm. diagnosis um, then what happens is um, they, a, a, a meeting is held to create a plan mm -hmm. and it's discussed with the, the county and the family what, what the family concerns are and they establish all that. At that point they decide who is the best person to go in to work on these concerns. Gotcha. Um, so that might be a time when Karen Sue will get a call mm -hmm. and um, you know, can you see this child? Um, this child is not uh, is not eating, or he's not um, uh, eating, uh, or it is sensory. Um, and she'll go out, and I'll let you take over at this point to give maybe an example of, of what we would then go in and, and do. Okay. Well, with uh, Sunshine Therapeutic Services, uh, Suzanne contracts with um, occupa pediatric occupational therapist, um, speech and language pathologist and uh, special instructors. Mm -hmm. Is that it? Do we? So, um, so if there is a, a child with different needs, mm -hmm. Suzanne will choose which one of us you know, would best work for those child's needs. So uh, in occupational therapy and early intervention, I will go in for uh, motor delays, and that would be as early as uh, they're not rolling, uh, they don't tolerate any time on their belly, mm. um, they're not crawling, they're not walking, um, so that's what I work with. Also, if they're not feeding, uh, say that they're uh, slow to, to drink on the bottle or they're taking in uh, a lot of gas, creating a lot of discomfort, or they won't transition from um, baby food to real table food. Mm -hmm. We work with that. Um, with an autistic, and, and it's all done through play. Mm -hmm. It's all done through their natural environment. So it's not uh, like where you go into the hospital and you have all this equipment, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and you set them up. It's done with their toys. Their caretakers are in the room doing it with me. They're on the floor with me doing it. Um, it's not that time for the mom to go and and do her own thing. Um, so it's a lot of educating the parent on it. And then when we get into more uh, communicative and language, then a speech and language pathologist will come in. We have special instructors who will come in if they're not doing um, play at their normal developmental time. Um, and then uh, we also do with the autistic 
the children who have autism diagnosis um, a thing called sensory integration and that is just um, um, facilitating a lot of sensory play um, so that they uh, start to um, organize it in their brain uh, so that they can do higher level um, functioning like eventually reading, writing. Mm -hmm. um. I'm a parent, Karen, so, mm -hmm. and so you described a couple of things and I think the parents out there watching with young children. So if, if the child has a problem transitioning from the, the milk yes. uh, to the solid foods, yes. um, it's something that they, it should be a, like a light should go off and say there might be a problem? Yeah, it, 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 I would have to say it have to be kind of extreme, like yeah. your child is gagging, throwing up, you can't uh -huh. get any food okay. into them. Um, they're, they might be a diagnosis failure to thrive because their uh, weight and their height okay. is not within the normal charts. That's definitely. And then if the child is stationary, it doesn't want to sit on the on on, on the stomach, doesn't want to crawl, mm, doesn't want to turn. Is another another um, correct? Yeah. Light should go off. Yeah, and, and I would say too, if you had a premature delivery, mm -hmm. um, it would it w I would definitely say to you to ask your pediatrician what about early intervention? Mm -hmm. um, we do have quite a few. Uh, children who have developmental delays who were preemies mm -hmm. and um, you know they just need an extra kind of yeah. kick for maybe six months maybe a year yeah. um, you and know. sometimes a parent might say oh my child's okay take take that up with your gut go with, go with say, your gut moms and, go with your gut because it's yeah. something that the, you know, the child's gonna pay for later on and you are you know go with yeah. your gut correct yeah and you know what too I think a lot of parents um, have an issue with labeling children and they say oh this label will stay with them it won't it won't it won't you know don't worry about that just you know and it's kind of like I'm coming in as the baby guide mm -hmm. you know everybody goes I've had this child and I don't have a booklet well mm -hmm. if you have an issue calling early intervention we're like the the baby pamphlet guide <laughs> Suzanne you must love what you do because you're, you're out there helping young young kids young young children and right right it's That's very rewarding and to see the improvement right and when you're in the home you become a part of the family yeah. and you get invited to birthday parties and, oh, mm -hmm. and it, it's, it's it's very rewarding and we do see so much progress um, at, you know when you're working with them at such a young age and that is very rewarding yeah and knowing that you're helping families and a lot of times there's behavioral issues that go along with some of these delays and issues and uh, being able to help with that is it's really nice yeah it, it i could understand that uh, it's it's not a labor it's something you really love and it's, and it has to be a passion too cuz i and you're in in what you do and i tell this to the to the folks and and all of these various services and shows that we've done in the past you truly love what you do cuz it's not it's not a high-paying job. It, it's 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 dedication. Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, I know that there's um, you know, a problem with funding. There always is, but we're going to do our very best we to try to that. restore the dollars because we know that the folk, this population needs it. You know, um, if we can cut somewhere else, let's cut somewhere else. But mm -hmm. the, the MHDS programs need need to be whole in, in our in our county and in our growing county now in Monroe we've had some problems in the last few years we've got some empty homes because of taxes and uh, so the, the I think that population I think we talked about it off camera that popula the your, your referrals are down because mm -hmm. it's it's we've got 3500 empty homes right now in Monroe right. County yeah. um, I met you at an event last year I, I spoke at the at the autism awareness walk and I believe it's, it's coming up again and I think I, I'd like to get the people to to you know come out you know if you're really in and it's a it's a great event and it was at the racetrack it is it's, it's held at Pocono Raceway it'll be August 26th this year um, autism speaks mm -hmm. and um, even if if you know if you have a family member mm -hmm. who has autism or even if you don't and you just want to come out and support the community um, they have a resource fair you can come on out and, and do some fun activities with your children and um, and then there's a walk to support 
and um, it's just a great day. Plus, there's all the various agencies are there. I believe you, you have a, a table there. Right. So you can actually go and, and talk to, the, to some of the providers, the agencies, right. uh, if you feel that there is a problem. So if, if you're out there looking at the show and you're, if you're that, come, come out there and talk to the folks. Right? Right, come out and talk to us, and, and we'll be happy to answer any questions. We, we have activities. Karen Sue brings her big old ball and... and mm -hmm. um, and there's, there are also other activities um, and tables that with lots of great resources for the community, yeah. for the whole community. And I'm going to have a pamphlet. We're going to show up a pamphlet of, 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 your, of your company and what you do. And um, it's actually going to show, we're going to show it up on the screen rather than look at us. And I think it's important to let the, the good service that you provide in our area, Monroe County. And, um, and hopefully, uh, if there's a family out there that really feels that uh, they might have a problem with, the, with their child, they can pick up the phone and uh, come Absolutely. and see you. We'll be able to help uh, answer any questions and help in any way that we can. Yeah. Well, it's really been a pleasure uh, 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 for you to come out here to the studio and uh, meet thank with Thank you. Thank you for having me. us. Thank no, you it, it, for being it's here. No, an absolute pleasure. And, and, and thank, you, thank you very much. And I'll be at the walk. I'll be at the walk, and uh, my wife and I, and hopefully I'll get my sister to come out and a few other folks. And it, it's, it's really, first of all, the walk is great, and mm -hmm. it's for a great cause, and, uh, and it's a beautiful setting. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we'll have a nice day. It was kind of hot last year. Mm -hmm. It was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the time we have for today's program. I'm State Representative Mario Scavello. If you have any questions about any state-related matter, please feel free to contact me at my local office or through my website. The address and phone number will be shown in a moment. Thanks for watching, and please join me next time for another edition of Legislative Report.